Okay, uh, home stretch here. I uh, hope everybody's enjoying the show. Thank you very much, uh, Frank, for giving us the opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about the market. We're excited about it. <laughs> so what is, what is really driving this need for, for uh, CXL? Um, you know, we talked a little bit about earlier today about uh, essentially a, an existential challenge our, our servers are facing here in the next couple of years, not, uh, not you know, five years or six years or seven years away, but fairly quickly. And it has to do with the fact that increasing core counts on the compute side, essentially the innovation happening on the compute side is significantly, not a little bit, but significantly different in terms of the innovation happening on the memory side. <clears throat> so we've got core counts increasing something on the order of about 20, 25% per year. And when it comes to memory capacity, memory bandwidth, increasing nowhere near that. <laughs> and I, I, actually, it's been that way for, for quite some time, as you see from the plot. So essentially, memory is not able to keep up. We need more channels. We need more I.O. We need faster line rates. And even then, it's, uh, it's just still not enough. And so what we're seeing is essentially, over time, a, an increasingly dire situation where our cores are being starved <laughs> by both capacity as well as uh, memory bandwidth. <clears throat> What's more is that the year-on-year -year memory cost per gigabyte reductions are actually flattening. So we used to see you know, time periods not too long ago where we're, we're looking at you know, 15, 20% year-on-year cost declines as a function of the memory industry being able to scale. Those, are, those days are long gone. So we need something different, right? We need a new interface. We need the ability to bolt onto a system the additional bandwidth and the additional memory capacity that it needs. And so, so this situation without CXL, bad and getting worse. <laughs> so I'm here to talk today a little bit about um, workloads, use cases, market outlook. So the use cases that really uh, our, our customers and you know, server, server customers worldwide are, are really interested in <laughs> are actually the, the use cases where it, uh, it starts to, to become more stressful for the server baseline configuration. Um, and it's even getting so in the mainstream. So a lot of folks looking at AI training, you know, obviously uh, off to the right on the horizontal, you've got bandwidth sensitivity uh, by, by use case. Uh, vertical, you've got latency sensitivity by use case. And the way you read this plot is that pretty much anything in that blue area, <laughs> which is a lot of the really interesting workloads and use cases that, that people are wanting to go and tackle today, are actually a pretty good fit for, for direct attached CXL. You've got you know, AI, you know, inference, uh, relational database management systems on the analytics side. You've got uh, you know, training HPC, micro benchmarks just thrown in there for, for, uh, for good measure. Um, in-memory database platforms, all could benefit from, from CXL. And of course, there are alternatives to CXL, but they end up costing the, the, the system in an extreme way, and I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, that's not to say that mainstream use cases can't also benefit from, from increased man bandwidth as well as increased capacity that CXL provides. These are just the low-hanging fruit, if you will. So I'll go through about uh, you know, six or seven use cases here. Hopefully, this isn't new. You've, you've heard some of these uh, mentioned a couple of different times, but uh, we'll go through them nonetheless. So bandwidth expansion. <clears throat> a single by eight channel supported by PCI Gen 5 gives you roughly, you know, call it 25, 30 gigabytes per second of available memory bandwidth. Today, that's roughly equivalent to a memory channel, which is interesting because there's such a, uh, an issue with respect to signaling, with respect to power, thermals, cooling uh, in a standard system that adding additional memory channels is extremely expensive. <laughs> it's, it's taxing on the, the power delivery system, it's taxing on the, on the cost and other areas. So, <clears throat> and that's obviously a, a huge benefit to use cases like you know, AI, HPC, um, in-memory database. So, these are use cases that can certainly benefit from essentially just bandwidth expansion. Pretty straightforward, both on bandwidth. This is an interesting one. 
we're, we're calling this enablement after two DIMMs per channel. <clears throat> and it's important because two DIMMs per channel is essentially the environment we've been living in for many years now. It's, uh, it's nice to be able to have two DIMMs in a channel to be able to service the capacity needs for the CPU. That luxury is going away here pretty soon. <laughs> call it 5600, call it 6400, wherever that is, as a, as a result of a, you know, signal integrity challenges, power, thermal, cooling, it's, it's going to cease to exist. And so yesterday, what you could do with two DIMMs, tomorrow you have to do with one. All else being equal, that's a doubling of DIMM capacity overnight. Big issue. <laughs> So the system's um, inability to accommodate this is, is really um, stressing the TCO model. And this leads me into another use case. This is connected to the previous use case because, again, all else being equal, you're doubling the capacity of a single DIMM. Now, with DDR5, that's an issue because at DDR5 line rates, we have to use what are called TSVs. This is through silicon via technology. It's not only a front-end process, meaning happens in the fab, it's also a back-end process, happens in assembly. There's yield loss, there's you know, variable costs associated with this, and it becomes nonlinear in a hurry <laughs> when, whenever you have to stack DRAM. Um, this is the technology, by the way, used in HBM. And so the use of TSVs really drives something nonlinear. And so it's, a, it's something we're paying attention to significantly <clears throat> in the industry because, again, without CXL, you don't have this kind of pressure release valve. Okay, um, granularity in terms of bandwidth and capacity expansion. What this means is, essentially, if a system were to, you know, from a baseline use case perspective, if you wanted to add just a little bit more bandwidth, or a little bit more capacity, today you can't, right? It's, it's double the dim density, or you know, adding another channel. And so what this allows you to do, CXL allows you to add a little bit more bandwidth, a little bit more capacity, so that you can actually dial in your kind of optimal use case, if you will. And so this is a, a very interesting uh, situation where uh, cloud service providers are looking at. Finally, ultra-high capacity. <clears throat> this is a situation where, you know, for in-memory database, for instance, large capacities, TSV-based, they want more. <laughs> this is a use case that wants an even bigger footprint. And so CXL allows you to do that. It's, it's bolt-on capacity, essentially. And finally, reducing system complexity. This could be maybe deploying a system where perhaps you don't need 10 memory channels or six memory channels will do. And so this is a situation where you can leverage CXL to provide that extra bandwidth, that extra capacity that you would otherwise have to do in a, say, a main memory channel. And finally, pooling, everybody's favorite topic here. Um, Without CXL, obviously, uh, this is a situation that, you know, it, it's, it's impossible, right? Uh, you, you have the CXL uh, ability to, to leverage multiple uh, nodes to, to, you know, access the same, same pool with essentially increase in the utilization of your memory. Okay? Finally, uh, CXL Memory TAM Outlook. We think... <laughs> CXL is a, is a big deal. Um, this, again, uh, addresses a lot of the existential issues that we're seeing in the systems today. And by not very long from now, uh, we're seeing essentially double-digit uh, uh, you know, provisioning in terms of CXL, the memory associated with CXL versus um, the total bits on the CXL, or the total bits on the server. So, it's, uh, it's coming, it's, it's, uh, it's gonna be huge, we think. And uh, with that, thank you very much for the attention and uh, appreciate your time.